Hey guys, welcome back to Boho Jewel. I'm Sandra Bells. Um, I want to share with you today this really cute pattern that I found. Let me found the, find the front. Um, and I made a scarf with it. So I found this really, really pretty soft yarn and it had this fun pattern on the front and I decided I wanted to use it as a scarf because it's just so soft and cushy and fluffy but it has a pattern on how to make these really neat braids and it might not be everybody's cup of tea to use this as a scarf because you get these little knobs at the end but i like it i like how it looks when it's on because it adds a little texture even around the edges and this material is just super soft so i feel like it works but i wanted to share the pattern with you in case you want to use it yourself for a project um, and uh, this is kind of where it starts. So we're creating these rows and this little sort of ladder that ends up being braided. So I'm going to show you how to do this because once again it took me a while to figure out the pattern. Um, this is the yarn that I used. It's Burnett Crushed Velvet. Um, let me see if I can find the color on here for you. Oh, I think I toasted something. Oh, sorry. I'll see if I can find it. I ripped the color off. Let's see, oh wait, here we go. Toasted Plums is the color, if you love that color too. So um, here is the original idea for the pattern they have for the pillowcase, but I have a ton of pillowcases already, didn't need that, but I really wanted to figure out how to do those braids. So um, this is a five weight yarn, and it calls for a five and a half uh, crochet hook, and we're going to use the crochet pattern. Now, um, the yarn that I'm gonna use to demonstrate is actually just um, kind of a lighter gray yarn and I believe this is a four weight but I'm still going to use my five and a half crochet hook. Um, I just feel like this is going to show up better on camera plus this yarn is so soft and fluffy that it's kind of hard to see where you're going sometimes. So for demonstration purposes I wanted to use something that I knew you'd be able to see the stitches fairly easily. And just one more little thing I want to share because I am obsessed with this crochet hook. I have a feeling I'm going to go get all of my sizes in this. They had these at Michael's and they're super cute, which is of course <laughs> what drew me in at first, but I've been needing a five and a half millimeter crochet hook and so I found these. It's Yarnology Luxury Crochet Hook but it's only like $2.99 so I thought that was not really expensive um, and they have them in all sizes so from the teeniest tiniest to the biggest and it really is super comfortable. I don't know if you guys have seen some of my other videos. I had one that um, had like a kind of an ergonomic handle or whatever you want to call it and it started slipping off super frustrating I love this like it is actually really comfortable so if you're looking for a comfy crochet hook definitely go check it out and I believe they had some knitting needles too but I haven't gotten into the knitting yet <laughs> so let's get this started so now what I discovered with this pattern if you want to create the pillowcase that's on the front they say chain 83 and then you end up creating um, let's see it says just create rows until it measures about 40 inches from beginning to end. So, and then you end up folding it over. I obviously, I didn't want to do a pillowcase. I wanted to do a scarf. So I wanted it much longer and it took a lot of trial and error to figure out how I needed to make that happen. So what you're going to do is single crochet a chain, um, create your slip knot and just crochet a chain in patterns of seven and eight. So what does that mean? It took me a lot to figure this out. Math is not my thing, okay? So, <laughs> so, so we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then again, seven, two, four, five, six, seven, and I'm gonna do one more eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now 
Um, this is just, I'm just going to leave it this long for demonstration purposes, just to show you guys how to get the pattern started because then it's basically just repetition. So you would create a chain as long as you want. So if you're using it for a specific pillow size or a scarf or blanket or whatever you're doing, create it as long as you want it. But then in pattern seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, eight, and then add one more. Boom. Add one more to the end of that because you're going to lose that one chain when we start working. Then to create your base, you're just going to single crochet all the way across. So single crochet, if you don't know single crochet, you go through your chain, yarn over, and then you yarn over and pull through both loops. Through the chain and pull through both loops. And this whole pattern is basically just single crochet. It's single crochet and a lot of counting and skipping. Um, and really, I mean, it took me quite a while to get the scarf done because a lot of times I, when I start getting in, ooh, when I start getting into a pattern, I just kind of space out with it. I can watch TV or whatever, but with this one, I really found I needed to count, especially with that really soft yarn because that really soft yarn, the loops are not quite, they kind of blend together all the fuzzes and the loops are not quite as visible as they are with, um, you know, a less fluffy yarn. <laughs> so we just do single crochet all the way to the end. And if you guys find too that you struggle with some of these patterns, do not feel bad. I thought it was just me because I'm still learning a lot of crochet. Um, it's just something fun for me to kind of switch it up from the jewelry making and the drawing just to do something different. I like to do all kinds of creative things. So I thought maybe I just didn't understand the patterns, but guys, my mom has been crocheting since she was a little kid. Like they learned the stuff in school. Her sisters crocheted and knitted and did all kinds of things. Her mom did it. And sometimes I ask her for help and she's like, she's got to do a double take on it too. So it's just the patterns are great. I mean, I'm grateful that they offer these because that's a big way that I've been learning, but they're very basic and simple. And so if you're not really sure um, what they mean or where they're going with it sometimes, it can be confusing. So if you guys ever find a pattern that you want to try or you're struggling with, um, send it my way. I'm always looking for new projects. Send it my way. Send me a picture or send me a link. I love to help you figure it out. That's what I do. <laughs> All right, so we get to the end of our row and we're just going to chain one and turn. Now here is where our basic pattern comes in. So what we're gonna do is single crochet in the first seven chains. So just like what we just did, one, two, straight through the chain, very simple. Four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so now we're going to just chain eight from here on that seventh stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to skip eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And on that ninth one, we're going to do a single crochet. So there is our single crochet to anchor that, and that becomes the first of our next seven. And we're just going to do another seven in the row. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And again, we're going to chain eight. One, two, eight. Okay. And again, skip eight and chain into the next one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So right here on the end, these little end ones always get lost in the mix. Okay, there we go. And 
That's our anchoring chain. Now you would just do this all the way across your piece until you reach the end of your row. Now ideally, I didn't count this off before we started, chain one and we go back around. Ideally you want to end on a seven. So um, that's a little something I forgot, I apologize. So just for demonstration purposes, I landed on the eight, um, but you ideally want to land on the seven on the end of the row. It just kind of makes it a little bit of a neater um, row. So then you're going to turn it around so I'm actually going to, just to show you guys to make it a little easier so it doesn't get too confusing, even though I probably just made it confusing. <laughs> Sorry. We're going to chain one right here and turn around. So now, this is where I got a little bit confused because I wasn't sure where I was going in and carrying over and it took me going through this a few times to really figure it out. I don't know why, it just seemed confusing. So what we're doing is going into these seven with single crochet just on top of those seven. Five six, seven, okay? And then we're going to single crochet into each of the chain spaces. Now I think part of what confused me on the really soft fabric is again, it can be a little difficult to see where those spaces are, so just keep that in mind. Um, don't get frustrated if you're using this super nice soft fabric or fabric uh, yarn. Um, it can be tricky to, to kind of see it sometimes, and I noticed I really had to work on this during the day because even lamp light kind of made it difficult to see. So we've got our seven, and so now you really want to start in your first chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to start in that first chain. So get a handle on that first chain, and that's our first one. So one, two, three, four, those little chains are hard to hold on to, five, six, seven, and eight. So you see you have that last chain right there. Okay, now I found it was important to count these simply because when you get to these pieces where it links together, it can be a little hard to see depending on the yarn that you're using. So I made sure to count. These were my seven and then on my chain I have eight and then I go back into the next seven. One, two, And I made sure to count because there were several times until I got the hang of it where I realized I only had six here um, or I somehow ended up with eight so I knew I had missed something here. And it's going to look a little wonky. Do you see how curvy it looks and it looks a little odd? You're going to think you're doing something wrong but you're not. So I'm going to do one more. So chain one, turn it around and that's basically what we're doing. So now we're going to go back across our seven and we're going to create another chain. to um, for the ladder, for the next little rung on the ladder. Yep, seven. So now we're here again, but we need to create another one of these, so we chain eight. Boom, and then we're skipping these, but again, instead of just going in right here, I recommend counting your chains just to be sure. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we're going into this one. 
and that is our one for the next seven. Because as this grows, what I realized, and it could just be me, but just visually trying to guess at where it was going in, lining it up, especially with this particular yarn, because it's very loose and um, it kind of, you know, it's very flexible. So it's easy to kind of miss a space. And then we just do our next seven. So that's one, two, three, Ooh, get back in there. Okay. And then chain one and turn it around. I'm just going to pretend like I didn't do that. <laughs> and then we do the same thing. So you, again, you just same thing. You go across and you're counting your seven and then you're chaining, doing your single crochet into that chain of eight. right there and it's easy for that to kind of hide that's why I always kind of go and look to make sure I'm in that actual first chain right there because I think that's where I had missed them most of the time so you want to make sure you're in that first chain to start that eight okay and then we go all the way across and then that is basically the pattern guys um, so I won't spend too much more time on that. So then that's basically what you're doing. You're just going back and forth and back and forth and then you end up with this nice long ladder however long or wide you end up wanting your piece. So let me show you. I think I ended up with, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows on this one. So then what you're doing to create that braid on your first rung right here, you're going to lift it up and just twist it. Okay, you're going to create a loop just like that. And from that loop, you're going to pull the very next one through. So you've got your loop and you pull that through. And that's kind of your foundation chain. Now you don't have to twist anymore after that. You're just going to pick up each loop, pull it through, pick up the next loop, and pull it through the front. And then it creates a little loop on its own and pick up the next one. Try to make sure you can see that and pull it through all the way up to the top. All the way through that last one. Okay. Now I'm sure on the pillow what ends up happening, so then you're going to secure this just by sewing it together and then on the pillow that's going to disappear a little bit, that little bump. So this is just what I did to secure my ends on the top. I don't, again, I don't mind the little bump too much, especially because it's such a soft material. I just hold it to where it's kind of even out, like you have that last loop behind and there's that loop and I just want to connect them so they're not going to fall apart. And I just take my needle and just kind of weave it through. Um, with this particular, you know, this variegated, oh, you get over there, this variegated um, yarn, everything blends pretty easily. Um, I'm not doing any kind of particular stitch here, just something to make sure that it's secure, just to wiggle it through so that there's no issues. And pull that through the front. And I'm going to meet it down here with that little piece and tie it off. So this is not, um, with this fluffy yarn, that was just, I just kept it as simple as possible with tying it off, just like that, and then kind of cut as close to that little knot as possible, just to keep it secure so it doesn't come loose again. So let me show you one more time. I want to make sure that it showed up well on the camera how to finish these. So that first one right here, you twist it just like this, okay? 
and then the next loop that's behind it, that very next loop, you push it through the front. And then you have another loop. And then with the others, you don't twist, you just pull it through and it creates that braid pattern. And just pull it through all the way down your row of whatever you're making. So I hope that that made sense to you guys. I think it's a really cute pattern. I think it's something that could be incorporated into some different projects. Now what I will say as far as making the pattern bigger or larger for the braids, I would definitely play with that because um, you can see using that skipping the eight that makes it pretty, I mean, it's pretty snug. So if you try to do something smaller, like say five and six, it might be a little tricky to get your fingers through. Depends on the weight of your yarn and um, the size of your fingers. <laughs> I have um, big fingers, <laughs> but I can work some magic with them. So, um, so yeah, so that's something to consider. Or even if you did it larger, I imagine you could play with like a nine ten pattern, but just keep in mind those numbers. And let me know if you guys try this for yourselves. I'm going to finally finish this up. I've been waiting to do the tutorial and I will take a picture of it. So, <coughs> excuse me, got a little choked there. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know um, if you have any questions. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you soon.